Rad Nation, today we're going to be talking about penetration, especially x-ray penetration, how it's going to affect your ability to make medical images, especially if you're an x-ray technologist or a CT technologist. This is definitely the right place to be. I'm Brian from How Radiology Works. So first off, let's talk about just projectiles going through some water-like substance. If you were to take a gun that has buckshot in it, and you were to fire that gun straight into a gel, the projectiles all are gonna go through the gel and they're gonna stop all along a similar distance. This has to do with all the continuous interactions that those little BBs essentially are having as they're going through that gel. So they're depositing energy relatively consistently as they're going through until the very end where they're going to come to a stop. That's the stopping power. It's shown right here. This same type of thing happens actually with charged particles as they're going through matter. So for instance, if you had alpha particles or electrons that we call betas, or if you had protons, as they're gonna be going through the matter, they're gonna continually be depositing energy or dose in this case, until the very end, this is what's called the Brad peak, where they will then deposit basically all of their energy. X-ray and CT imaging, we're actually interested in non-charged particles. Let's imagine we fill up this tub with water. So similar to having that gel there. So if we fill up this tub with water here, and then here's some distances for reference, five centimeters, 10 centimeters, and 15 centimeters. And we'll use X-rays that are similar to the types of X-rays that we have in our medical imaging. And as we go through, you can see the X-rays are gonna be coming in. Imagine we shoot 1,000 X-rays through this water. Then essentially half of those X-rays are gonna stop in the first five centimeters. And then half of that are gonna be stopped in the next five centimeters. And another half of that are gonna be stopped in the following five centimeters. So as you're going through, we're going to have 500, if we start with 1,000, we're gonna have 500 making it to five centimeters, and then we're gonna have 250 making it to 10 centimeters. As we get to 15 centimeters in, we only have 125 X-rays that are gonna be making it through. So this is different than those charged particles because the X-rays essentially are going through and they're just gonna have one interaction as they come through. They're either gonna stop with photoelectric or they're gonna scatter, but they're not gonna have many small interactions such as the charged particles or such as those BBs going through the uh, gelatin at the beginning that we talked about. So for x-rays, what this leads to is a distribution like this, where in I naught, x-rays are coming in and then those x-rays are gonna be attenuated as they're going through and then I x-rays are coming out. Tration is actually how much x-rays are getting through. So I divided by I naught is actually gonna be the measure of your penetration or the amount of x-rays, the fraction of x-rays that are passing through the patient. Penetration is gonna be heavily dependent on several factors, including the thickness. For instance, if you look at a very thin patient, you can see that the intensity coming out is going to be much higher than if you look at a relatively thin patient and then if you look at a thicker patient, the intensity is gonna be dropping again. So we can see that the penetration is strongly dependent on the thickness. Talk about the attenuation here. So again, the attenuation is just the sum of absorption due to photoelectric effect or scatter. So if the x-rays are absorbed or if they're scattered, in either case, we call those x-rays attenuated. They're no longer in the primary beam. Attenuation coefficient measures how much attenuation happens in a given distance. So for the same thickness now, if you have a smaller attenuation coefficient, we use this Greek symbol mu to denote the attenuation coefficient. If you have a smaller attenuation coefficient, you're going to end up with more penetration. And if you have a larger attenuation coefficient, you're going to end up with less penetration. You can think about splitting that attenuation into two terms. So what we just plotted was the attenuation coefficient, but we could split that up into one that's dependent on the materials. 
So that's called the mass attenuation coefficient, and then one that's dependent on the density. You can see here the attenuation coefficient is just when you multiply the mass attenuation coefficient by the density. So both of those things are going to be directly proportional to the attenuation. For that reason, if you have a part of the body which is less dense, such as the air in your lungs, that is going to have significantly less attenuation. So if you had the same thickness, but the density is lower, you're going to have less attenuation and hence more penetration. We talked about in other lectures, the mass attenuation is gonna be heavily dependent on the Z or the number of protons essentially that you have. So things like bone, calcium, iodine, barium, these things are all gonna have significant contrast. Even if the density was the same, the attenuation is gonna be much higher for these types of materials. That impact our imaging. You can see that our image is composed of many different regions. And for instance, we can have areas that are dominated by the air, such as in here. And then those are gonna be relatively dark. We go through then fat, soft tissue, bone, and metal have progressively higher attenuation. If you look at the bone here, you can see that the bone is definitely brighter than that background of lung tissue because the bone has higher attenuation coefficient. But you can see that even with similar bone in the spine, you can see because there's more material that is being passed through, there's a higher thickness of bone there. You can see that on our x-ray images, the bone is going to be significantly brighter. It's the beauty of CT imaging in later lectures, but this lets us separate out the effects of the, essentially the thickness of the material and its attenuation coefficient so that we can make a map of just the attenuation coefficient. This is called Lambert Beer's Law after the people who've discovered it. And the idea is just like those plots that we've been showing you, they're all basically just pictures of this function here. And you can see that we have an exponential function. So there's a strong relationship. And in the exponent, we have our attenuation coefficient and our thickness, just like we talked about. You can break that into a mass attenuation coefficient, a density, and a thickness contribution. This really determines the penetration of the x-rays as they're passing through your patient. Beer's Law. We're working on a video right now for a calculator that's going to allow us to calculate the penetration for regular materials like water, bone, soft tissue. Click on the link coming up. That'll be there once it's ready.